Hey there, so last time we took a look at the trig key Ryzen 5 5500U mini PC go up against the SRE5 with the Ryzen 5 5560U and it came out on top. But I now want to compare it against the B-Link SCR6 mini PC. Now this is rocking the Ryzen 5 6600H. What this means is that it is running on Zen 3 Plus and we have an RDNA 2 based iGPU in comparison to the Zen 2 cores in the Ryzen 5 5500U and the 7 Vega cores. Now this is going to be 7 Vega cores versus 6 RDNA 2 based cores going to be very interesting to see. Now, of course, the TDP differences between the two systems should be made aware. We're talking about 25 watts versus around 40 watts on the SRE6. And that is going to make a difference in terms of the overall results. But the biggest thing about these two systems is just how similar their design actually is. I'm almost positive that they're both manufactured in the exact same factory. And I am kind of convinced the trig key might be just be a sub brand of B-Link because the, the design of these chassis are almost identical. But let's take a look at what the CPU for performance is like. In terms of a Cinebench R23 score on the Ryzen 5 6600H, we managed to get a multi-core score of 9081 with a single core score of 1466. Now this is a pretty major increase over the 7137 that we got on the Ryzen 5 5500U and a nice bump over the 1188 for its single core. In general, the Ryzen 5 6600H is a pretty major uplift in both the CPU but also the GPU. So the first game that we're going to be testing out is pretty much the one that gave me the most amount of problems, and that is Sleeping Dogs. Now, between the Ryzen 5 5500U and the 6600H, you can see that the 6600H is giving a nice uplift in terms of performance. The problem is it kept crashing to desktop, and it wasn't just in the built-in benchmark. It was also during the game itself. It was the only game that was giving me these problems, but I think it might have to do with something with the game just not not working well with RDNA based iGPUs at the least. I'm not sure if their desktop GPUs are experiencing the same problems. Everything else though seemed to be working perfectly fine and we see consistently that the 6600H is showing some nice uplifts in terms of performance. Now of course this is comparing two different types of chips and two different product classes with the 5500U being a U series processor. It really is just meant to be used at around a 15 to 25 watt TDP, while the 6600H is designed for anywhere between 35 to 54 watts of usage. Still, this is the first meaningful uplift that you can see in terms of the iGPU from AMD. There's nothing in the 5000 series stack that will give you anywhere near this uplift. And the uplift from the 660M is pretty noticeable as you can see here with Ghost Recon Wildlands. We actually see a uplift where you could realistically try to get away with playing the game. It's still way too heavy if you ask me. Those 1% lows are still pretty brutal. But the up uplift in the averages is really nice. And if you pay attention to the frame time chart, it's consistent enough that the overall gaming experience is going to be significantly better. More so than what just looking at the 1% lows and the averages would lead you to think and this does carry over into hitman 3 now we are running this with the lowest in-game graphics settings we're not using fsr with either configuration here it is fsr 2.0 which is just far more demanding on these igpus than it would really help out but as you can see here there is a pretty tremendous uplift in terms of the fps average and our one percent lows which means that this pushes it to a whole different experience where now you can actually thoroughly enjoy the game without having to make sacrifices in terms of resolution or having to deal with stutters due to the 1% lows dropping below 30. So this is for sure a massive, massive uplift in terms of the overall gaming experience. And considering that this is the cut down version of RDNA 2 in terms of an iGPU since the 6800H and the 7735H have the 12 core version of this iGPU instead of just the six cores that we have here. Not to mention the increase in terms of clock speed. This makes me very excited to actually try out an RDNA 2 high end or an RDNA 3 high end based APU. As you can see here with Forza Horizon 5, the uplift is pretty meaningful. 
And what it really mostly does is it just takes the titles that might have been a little bit more difficult to run to get a consistent experience. It just pushes it over to the point where you can actually consistently reliably use 1080p instead of having to make concessions going down to 900p or sometimes even 720p. That is really the biggest improvement here, the fact that you don't have to fiddle with resolution as much. And while we're not hitting high refresh rate averages, there's still more than consistent enough that you can play the game comfortably. It's not just the GPU that really improves the overall experience though. As you can see here with Mountain Blade Banner Lord, the CPU having the IPC increase as well as just having a overall higher clock speed advantage actually gives us a massive massive increase in terms of performance in this particular game it's to the point now where you can actually consider turning up some of the graphics settings so that you can get a better visual experience here or in those moments of really intense combat with a lot of units you can expect that your fps is going to be able to keep up to the point where you can actually play the game consistently it was really impressive to see another title that really saw some massive increases is rainbow six siege here we are running it with the lowest in-game graphics settings. We are using FSR at the quality preset, and this is using the Vulcan API. And as you can see, there is a pretty substantial increase in terms of our average and our 1% lows. Just look at those frame time charts. They are about as smooth as they can get on the 6600H. This is just a completely different level of experience. It just feels so buttery smooth. You can actually utilize a high refresh rate monitor and get some utilization out of it. It's pretty Pretty nice to see. And this really is what has made the 6600H the biggest jump in performance that we've seen from any Ryzen 5 based system. It is the fact that the iGPU is now substantially more powerful while also pairing in a really nice and powerful CPU. You're not compromising on either one here. You're pretty much getting class leading performance in terms of Ryzen 5 levels of performance and you get an iGPU that outclasses pretty much anything based off of Vega. And so far we haven't seen any replacements for this Ryzen 5 APU hit the market. Of course, due to the fact that it is the cut down version, it is pretty much one of the more poorly performing RDNA based iGPUs. The only thing worse really is just the really cut down versions that they put as the integrated graphics on pretty much every generic desktop CPU. Those are just two cores. This is six cores here. The highest end that you can go with is 12. Now that being said, this really just eats up older titles like they're nothing. You're able to get some high refresh rate experiences in a lot of older titles while also maxing out graphics, even in the most demanding situations. It's still really impressive. It's really the fact that it pushes a lot of these older titles from having a more around 40 to 50 FPS average into having 60 or more, which means you are getting a rock solid experience. And especially the uplifts that you see in 1% lows, those are going to be the most meaningful and the most noticeable upgrades. And I just can't wait until systems with this specific iGPU end up hitting the lower end of the market. If we could have iGPUs this powerful hitting mini PCs in the 200 to 250 dollar price range, that's going to be kind of a game changer. As as you can see here in Mafia 2's Definitive Edition built-in benchmark, the uplift in terms of average is really nice, but also boosting the 1% lows, though not as drastic of an uplift, does at least push it above 30. And in general, it's just going to make a lot of these titles a far more enjoyable experience. If this APU could eventually reach the same status as the 5500U just being around for a really long time, we could be into a great future for budget buyers. There's just a huge collection of older titles out there that get pushed into being in a territory where it is the difference between having like a PlayStation 3 and going to a PlayStation 4 or in some cases even a PlayStation 5. And what I mean by that is that games like Grid 2 here, we're not running at high graphics settings at a full 1080p resolution on the PlayStation 3 or the Xbox 360. It was running a lot of the times at around 540p or sometimes even lower and a lot of titles back then 30 FPS was about as good as it would get and here you're able to actually play the game with 
high graphics settings at a t full 1080p resolution and the level of performance that you get out of this is next level. As you can see here with the Tomb Raider remaster, we see a nice uplift in terms of our average and of course those 1% lows also see a nice bump and again this is at the high graphics setting. That being said though, one thing you might have noticed throughout all of these tests is the temperatures that we're reaching. This chip does get pretty toasty in the B-Link SRE6. These temperatures are well within safe operating ranges and the system is still more than usable but it is noticeably louder than the trig key with the 5500U. In general though the uplift that we're seeing for that increase in power usage is pretty substantial. As you can see here with Metro Last Light it pushes us now to an above 60 FPS average with 1% lows that are at a more than comfortable enough range. This is as opposed to barely getting 50 and just just 1% lows just slightly above 30. It is a whole different league in terms of how you experience these games. Considering the amount of systems that now have this chip on the market right now and just its wide availability and how competitively priced it's starting to get, it does actually become a far more interesting option in comparison to all of the 5000 series based APUs that you see out there like the 5500U, the 5600U, the 5500 60U and even the systems that are rocking the 5800H they can't really compete because the iGPU is just go not going to be anywhere near the level of performance that the 6 core Radeon 2 iGPU in this system is actually able to give us. So considering that there are some systems with this chip that are getting into the $350 price range if you're looking at the system with the 5800H if gaming is what matters the most to you you get a lot of gaming performance here and all you're really doing is sacrificing two cores on the CPU to get an iGPU that is able to give you significantly better performance in certain titles where sometimes it's double the performance. So you definitely have some interesting options on the market out there but I'll catch you in the next one.